Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to discuss a very important principle of the ascendant. How to strengthen your ascendant. This can include your first house, planets in your first house, or the lord of the first house. And this can be true for any ascendant. Either your ascendant has an exalted planet, or it has a debilitated planet, or your ascendant lord is exalted, it's in debility, it's in multricorn, wherever it is, or any malefic is there in your ascendant, or natural benefic is there, functional malefic, functional benefic, all right? Rahu, Ketu, Saturn, anybody. <laughs> this holds true for anybody actually. And uh, if you just understand this fundamental principle, then what happens is your life becomes very simple. And you will realize that uh, things are much more simpler than you think they are not. <laughs> okay, so where do I get this from? This is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, Balaramji speaks this. Balaramji for the Westerners, he is uh, Lord Krishna's elder brother. And he is actually Sheshnag. He is the... Uh, He's like Lord Vishnu's bed where Lord Vishnu resides. You know, he, he's actually a multi-headed uh, snake actually. You know. Like in uh, Greek um, uh, philosophy, you have the concept of Hydra. You know, the, I think it's a five-headed or you know, six or multiple-headed snake. Okay, So it's something like that. <coughs> so what does Balaramji say here? Balaramji says the biggest secret of happiness is... Uh, <laughs> Now you may be thinking, oh, ascendant means yes, I just have to be myself, right? I have to do what I like. No, you don't have to be yourself. Well, then uh, what the hell do you mean? Don't be myself. I have to be like somebody else. I have to pretend like somebody. I have to impress somebody. Or I have to behave something very artificially. No, nothing of that sort. You don't have to be yourself nor do you have to be somebody else. Well, then who do you have to be like? You have to understand what is the ascendant. Ascendant is a junction between the fifth and the ninth, if you understand the trines, okay? So therefore, it's very crucial that whenever you want to strengthen the ascendant, you always check the planets in the trines. You must do that because the trines are known as supporting houses. So the, the ascendant supports the fifth and the ninth. And the fifth house supports the ascendant and the ninth. And the ninth house supports the ascendant and the fifth. It's very crucial. So therefore, if you think that you will understand the ascendant without understanding the trines, then uh, you will need a thousand years and still, still you will be clueless. So Balaramji says in Srimad Bhagavatam, so if you know where he says this, then write it down in the comments. Let me see how many of you have read. <laughs> so he says there are uh, three secrets to happiness. Because ascendant deals with anything which you like. So in general, people like to be happy. In general, I'm saying. Yes, not 100%. Because there are people who also tell me that... Uh, they don't like happiness, which means they feel if things are very good, then they get bored. So we are not talking of that category here, but we are talking of people in general. They want to be good. They want good things in life. They want to uh, do good to others. Okay, So that category, or I would say 80 to 90%. So Balaramji says that if you want to be happy, then there are three rules which you should follow in life. What is the first rule? Whenever you meet seniors, okay, then you must be respectful and you should take enlightenment from them. Okay, what does this mean? This means Balamji refers to the ninth house because ninth house is the house of seniors. Ninth house is the house of your father, your guru or your gurus or any guide or any, any senior personality. It, it can refer to your mother also. But it's not the house of the mother, it's the fourth house. But it can refer to the mother also because the mother also gives a guidance uh, without doubt. It can refer to your elder brother, your elder uh, sister, anybody in fact. Okay, Not dedicatedly, but if they are giving you guidance, then they are behaving as if they are the ninth house that time. Okay, 
or maybe your or your younger brother also <laughs> okay so therefore uh, don't go stereotype by uh, the the trend so okay ninth house is your father okay but uh, what about your uh, elder brother or elder sister who gives you guidance so what about your mother or your uncle or your aunt or what about your younger sister who may give you guidance so all the people who give you guidance okay, they are seen from the ninth house okay Therefore, whenever the ninth house gets activated by a planet sitting there or the Lord of the ninth house is Dasha gets activated, then we see you get some kind of guidance from somewhere. Okay. So the thing is, uh, Balamji says, uh, wherever you meet somebody who is senior to you. Now, senior doesn't mean seniors. <laughs> My guru used to say, uh, sometimes people have only seen years. Which means, suppose uh, they are doing some spiritual practice from the last 20 years. So they have seen 20 years, seen years, but they don't become a senior. <laughs> so whenever, uh, whenever uh, you think you have become a senior, then you should think, have you just seen years or you have actually become a senior? Okay. Most of the times you will realize you, you are not a senior, you have just seen years. Okay. So that's, uh, that requires some humility to accept. Uh, but the point is, whoever they are, so suppose you go to a function and you see somebody who is more knowledgeable than you. Ninth house shows anybody who is better than you. That's all. End of the story. <laughs> That's why it is the most auspicious house of the zodiac. Because if the ninth house gets activated, then it means you are always staying with better people. A person with a prominent ninth house, ninth house is the most, most, most luckiest person in this entire, not earth, not India, Europe, not even Bulokain, not even this Brahman, or the, all the unlimited material universes. Why? Because then that person will always keep becoming better and better every moment. Every moment you are staying with better people and you are upgrading yourself, okay? Now, to what extent you upgrade yourself, that's secondary. That depends on the host. But in general, uh, we can understand that is why the ninth house is the most auspicious house. Okay, uh, Apart from the fifth also, of course. So, whenever you go somewhere, you see somebody is more knowledgeable. Okay, Then you should always uh, try to gain knowledge from them. Take enlightenment from them. Okay. Do not become envious. The problem is when we meet somebody who is more knowledgeable or is better than us, we become envious. So because of that, we try to uh, pull that person down, which is not very good. Okay, Because when we do that, then uh, we will become uh, more and more victims of inferiority complex. Okay, And we will de develop an unhealthy sense of ego. So therefore, whenever we meet somebody, it can be our Diksha Guru, our Siksha Guru, our Jyotish Guru or anybody. We should just forget who we are and we should always uh, go and uh, seek enlightenment from them. And uh, they, they can uh, refer to any, any, any other person also, even within our friend circle. Okay? Within our friend circle, we may find that there are some people who are more knowledgeable than us or more experienced than us in certain area of life. So even there, this works, okay? So even with your juniors, it will work. If some junior is uh, externally or internally also, I would say, more experienced. And that is why uh, my guru always used to say that uh, now, some, sometimes people ask me that I keep telling about my court brothers. I keep saying that, oh, there was one senior who told me like this. So, so once somebody asked me that you only keep saying of seniors, what about your uh, juniors, okay? So in spiritual life, there is no junior. Everybody is senior to us okay? because we don't know who has done what in which life. They might have done thousands of thousands of thousands of times more than us. So the best way to associate with members of a spiritual community is to believe that all of them are senior to us. Okay, They are better than me. I am the most inferior person. Okay. And this is not inferiority complex. This is not uh, downgrading yourself. This is a uh, healthy self-esteem. This is humility, okay? Because if you feel that, oh, I, I'm superior actually. Uh, this person can't help me. This person doesn't know anything else. Sometimes I see people saying in India, if you think like this, then 
you won't ever be able to take any knowledge from them. So even if you have uh, stayed in a community for 20 years and then some uh, new person comes and that person is speaking Bhagavad Gita or Shema Bhagavatam, so you should also go and sit in that person's class because you don't know what uh, God decides to teach you through that person. Okay, So therefore, don't go by this age. Don't, don't, don't think that you are elder or you are senior. So uh, you are the senior most. <laughs> you might have seen a lot of years, but they may be useless, wasteful years and you may be the junior most. Okay, So therefore if you have this consciousness you will always be upgrading yourself okay now this does not mean you feel inferior oh that that that's different that's actually self-obsession inferiority complex and superiority complex is a product of self-obsession self-obsession means oh i am terrible you know i'm bad i'm good for nothing i'm useless what will happen you know oh my god this will happen that will happen that person will pull me down you know it's like constant sense of insecurity it's basically status obsession basically okay so give up your status obsession or at least try it's easier said than done i know but this is one very big secret to happiness and uh, then you will feel that your life has become one step ahead you have gone one step further than you were before meeting this personality okay so therefore this is the first secret balanji says so instead of becoming envious or trying to pull them down or becoming jealous you should try to Take enlightenment from them in which area of life and the second secret he says is that whenever you meet somebody who is uh, junior to you try to enlighten them yes so junior again doesn't mean uh, year wise <laughs> okay uh, is the same definition applies here if you feel that uh, so many times in uh, when you are doing spiritual practices then you will see that uh, you you may have different weaknesses, different shortcomings. You you try to read the Gita and you know you cannot concentrate. But then there is a person who is junior to you, three years junior, okay, and that person has great enthusiasm to read the Gita. So then that person is behaving like your senior at that time. But suppose uh, you see that somebody is really like your junior, which means uh, you you feel that that person needs help, okay. So in that sense, if you feel that you you are more uh, you are more able to help that person by God's grace, not by your uh, own efforts or by because of your uh, false ego, then we should go and try to enlighten them. Okay, and that can be anybody. That that junior can be your father or mother or any 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 anybody actually. Okay. Now what we do is whenever we meet somebody who is like our junior, we try to exploit them. Okay. So the seniors always try to exploit their subordinates and that is why they are unhappy. And the juniors are always trying to uh, deny the uh, authority of the uh, seniors actually. That is why both are miserable. If you see in a, a company, corporate setting, the manager is always trying to extract the last uh, drop of blood which is there in the body of that junior. And this junior is uh, trying to uh, evade uh, every any responsibility which the manager has given. Okay. Now, if, you, if somebody wants promotions and all this, then they may, you know, uh, as they say in Hindi, na makhan lagana. <laughs> they may uh, they may try to impress the boss, but that's uh, temporarily okay. But the inherent motive is oh. You know, I should get money without doing anything. And the inherent motive of the manager, most of the managers, is that uh, let me exploit this person more and more okay, for my benefit. So that is why both are unhappy. That's why most of the people in corporate, they are the most miserable people you will see. Although they have so much money, uh, the problem is not with the money. The problem is with the attitude. Not that if you half reduce their salaries to half, they will become suddenly happy. Or you double their salaries, they will become more unhappy no it has nothing to do with the their salaries or the money which they get it the problem is with their attitude how they behave okay so fifth house is your subordinates so whenever you meet subordinates always 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 try to enlighten them and um, try to teach them what you know actually okay from the ninth house okay because if you uh, do that, then what happens? Then you get the ascendant in between. What is the ascendant? And Balamji says, rule number three, when you meet somebody who is equal, okay, ascendant shows equals, 
okay now of course friends are seen from the third house and the 11th house but ascendant can show things which are familiar to you okay so whenever you talk to an equal you feel yes we are familiar which means we know each other quite well okay so we are at the same level actually all right so whenever you are meeting an equal actually you should share your uh, knowledge uh, it, it should be like uh, sharing between two equals okay which means you share what you have done and you listen from what he or she has done this this is equal sharing so if you do that then you will exchange your ideas, each other's ideas. So whenever you meet an equal, you should always exchange your ideas, okay? Because then you can benefit from their experience and they can benefit from your experience. So if you just follow these three rules in life, then your ascendant will become very strong because you, as I said, don't, don't be yourself, don't be somebody else. Be like a instrument, a via medium, okay? Because if you just try to be yourself and you are like, no, I won't give anything to anybody. I'll just keep holding on. Oh, I know secrets. Many times, uh, many people tell me that uh, some secret astrology prediction technique they have got, which they have not shared with anybody. So that's, that's the problem. You're trying to hold knowledge. Okay. So when you're trying to hold this or anywhere, in fact, okay, then you will be the most miserable person in any field of knowledge okay not only astrology now you you take credits for what you have done that's not wrong i'm not saying that you uh, just uh, let anybody use your stuff but uh, what i'm saying is uh, whenever you get something always share it with others okay and by that what will happen is you are getting you getting is from the ninth house and giving is the fifth house and then the ascendant becomes very strong because the ascendant becomes like this river, river Ganges, which is always flowing, Ganga. <laughs> Have you seen stagnant water somewhere? It, it's poisonous, it's stinking and you will die if you drink that water. Okay. So don't be like stagnant water and uh, be like a flowing river, right? As Kunti Devi prays in uh, first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that, uh, may my consciousness flow towards you. She prays this for Lord Krishna. Just like uh, the the river, the river Ganga flows towards the ocean. Okay. So who is this ocean? Ocean represents God. He is the uh, ultimate uh, epitome of all knowledge, Krishna himself. But uh, the thing is, we, we have to understand that we should not hold anything. Right? So our tendency is when we meet the ninth house, we are envious we are jealous okay we are not interested in talking with them and when we meet the fifth house we are exploiting them and when we meet the ascendant which means equals we try to boast have done this that that this 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 that that what have you done in the indirectly we try to show our superiority okay which is actually fake because if you are superior to them then they will only come and ask advice and enlightenment from you. So superiority doesn't have to prove itself. Okay, Superiority itself is like a proof in its... I mean, it itself is the proof because then people will know you, right? But if you artificially have to boast and uh, this happens very much, I have seen, you know, when uh, people, they get together in this, you know, schools, like school reunion is there, you know, then... Everybody will try to boast, you know, oh, actually I did, you know, masters here, I did MBA there. Actually, you know, when I was in Paris, this happened. When I was in Brisbane, this happened. When I was in Chicago, this happened. When I was in Tokyo, this happened. When I was in Moscow, this happened. I've seen people doing this. Yeah, so they try to show that, you know, they, uh, they have surpassed all their peers and they have uh, got the best knowledge, best stuff, best education, actually, okay? So that makes them even more miserable because the Lagna can never become the ninth house. Remember, okay, ninth house is ninth house. <laughs> you cannot artificially pose your superiority like this. Then if you end up doing, then maybe you go to the twelfth house or eighth house. You get into depression because then you get this. This is why we do this because we are insecure. We 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 lack healthy self-esteem. Because a person who lacks healthy self-esteem, they can never admit that there can be somebody better than them. Okay? 
and this is not again inferiority complex inferiority complex is also the same it's like the other side of the coin inferiority complex is like self absorption oh i know actually inferiority complex means you you have failed so much or you have been humiliated so much because of that you have started believing you are inferior uh, inferiority complex is not like humility humility is totally different inferiority complex is a product of tamas tamoguna and humility is sattva guna okay humility means basically to acknowledge the presence of god and your gurus and the greatness of god basically that that's what is humility so uh, if somebody is very arrogant and all the time questioning ah oh, what is this god you know i don't believe all these scriptures and all this is all rubbish this is nonsense i don't believe it i am this i am that <laughs> so basically that person uh, lacks humility all right so therefore um, that is the biggest secret to being happy in life is to strengthen your ascendant okay and this you can do irrespective of who you are all right that is all i wanted to share so if you want to see more videos on the ascendant i'll put it here okay somewhere and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him